Hi, and welcome to the first lesson in my series on revising grade 4 for GCSE. Throughout the lesson, I suggest you read and try each question by pausing the video before the timer runs out. The word solution will then appear so you can check your work. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button below so you never miss a lesson. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll sketch a diagram. So we have the ground, and then we have the wall. We have a right angle between the two, and we're told that the ladder reaches 2.4 meters above the ground, so about here, and 14 centimeters from the base of the wall, so about here. We'll measure this in centimeters, and we need to convert 2.4 meters into centimetres, which is 240. So we've just multiplied this by 100 because there's 100 centimetres in a metre. So this is our ladder. Okay, so now we've been asked to work out the length of the ladder. And this is the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle. And we can use Pythagoras' theorem, so 240 centimetres squared plus the 48 centimetres squared will equal the hypotenuse squared. So we can work out the left-hand side and we get 59,904 is the hypotenuse squared. We can take the square root of both sides. And when we take the square root, the square and the square root will cancel. So we're left with the hypotenuse or the length of the ladder to be approximately 244.75 centimetres to two decimal places. We're going to expand and simplify the expression in part A, which is this expression here. So we'll begin by expanding the two pairs of brackets. The first thing we'll do is we'll multiply the 4 by the 2x, and this will give us 8x. We'll have the 4 times the positive 3, which will give us 12. And then for our next pair of brackets, I'm going to draw a circle around this negative 2. So I don't forget to multiply out by the negative for each term. So we have negative 2 times 3x, which is minus 6x, and then negative 2 times negative 5 which is positive 10. So now we can simplify this expression by collecting the like terms. We have 8x take away 6x, which is 2x, and 12 add 10, which is 22. So this is our simplified expression. So for part b, we need to find the highest common factor of both terms. And you can see that 2 goes into the 4 and the 6, so we'll have 2, and x goes into x squared, and x here. So the highest common factor is 2x. So we can write 4x squared as 2x multiplied by 2x, and 6xy is 2x times 3 times y. And because we already have a 2x, we can cross this out. And what we need on the inside of our brackets is another 2x here and a 3y. So to simplify this expression, we're going to use the rules of indices. So the first thing we'll do is we'll think of this as a 1w to the 5, because then we can multiply this 1 by the 20, and this will give us 20. And then we can have w to the 5 multiplied by w. And using the rules of indices, we add this 5 and this 1, w is w to the 1, and this will make 20w to the 6 over 4w cubed. So now we can have 20 divided by the 4 to make 5. 
and we have w to the power of 6 divided by w to the power of 3. And what this means is we have w to the 6 and we take away 3. This is the division rule. So this becomes 5w to the power of 3. In this Venn diagram, you can see that 10 people chose history, 7 people chose music, and 3 people chose both. And 5 people chose neither. And we've been asked to work out the probability that a student chooses history and music. So this is this bit here, which we call the intersection. So we write this as the probability of history intersecting with music is equal to three people out of, and the total sample is all of these numbers added together, which is 19. So three out of 19. So we've been asked to work out an estimate for the mean length of carrots. Now with an estimate, because we do not know the exact values of each length, all we've been given is the range. So we know there are five carrots within the range of zero to 20, but we don't know the exact value of them five. So to work out an estimate for the mean, we need to work out the midpoint of each class. So between 0 to 20, the midpoint is 10. And then between 20 to 40, the midpoint is 30. And then we have between 40 to 50, we have 45. And then 50 to 60, we have 55. And then from 60 to 80, we have a midpoint of 70. So now we need to work out the total estimate of the length for these five, eight, and so on, number of carrots. So we're going to work out the totals. So we have five carrots of approximate length 10. So in total, we have a length of 50. And then we have eight times the 30, which gives us 240. And then 45 times 35, gives us 1,575. 55 times 49 gives us 2,695. And then finally, we have the 70 multiplied by the three to give us a total of 210. So we know the mean average is the total, or in this case, the total length divided by so we can write that as a fraction, the sample size, or in this case, the total frequency. So the total length is found by adding up all of these individual totals. And we add all these up, we get the total to be 4,770. So now we can divide 4,770 by the total frequency, and when we add all these up, we get 100. So divided by 100 gives us an estimate, a mean estimate of 47.7 millimeters, which is the average length of a carrot. So we're going to work out the size of angle A to D to E, which is this angle here marked X. So we need to begin by identifying that D to C, this length here, is parallel with A to B. And A to D is parallel to C to B, because we're told that this is a parallelogram. We have also know that this is a isosceles triangle, which is given by this symbol here and here. So we know that, so we know that these angles will be the same. And if you look here, we can see we have, and you can see that this angle, C to E to B, is alternate with E to B to A, because they're angles in a Z shape. So now we've worked out angle B, which is 65 degrees 
because it's alternate with this one. And because it's an isosceles triangle, the base angles are equal, and this will be 65 degrees as well. And again, we can use alternate angles with this angle, B to A to E, and A to E to D. Because again, they are alternate. So this one will also be 65. So now we've got a triangle, A, D, E. So now we've got a triangle, A to D to E, where we know all three angles add up to 180. So we can work out angle X as 180 minus the 15, which is this angle here, take away the 65, which is this angle here. And this gives us 100 degrees. In this question, we've been told that we have a plan of a construction site when this length is given as 150 meters, which is the length of Long Lane. And we've been told that a mast is installed so that it is 150 meters from X. So what we can do is we can draw a circle with center X and a radius of 150 meters. So it looks a little bit like this. And this circle would go on all the way around. We've also been told that the mast is the same distance from a fence as it is from a high road. So this means that we've got an angle bisector between the fence and the high road here, which is going to give us an equidistant path. So we'll draw an arc using our compasses, and then we'll keep the radius of the arc the same length. We'll draw another arc from this point, which we'll call point A, this will give us an arc here. Another arc from point B. Now this radius must be the same as this radius. So we'll have intersecting arcs here and here. So the equidistant path or the angle bisector passes through the intersection of the two arcs. So now we can see that this angle is half of the full angle. So finally, we can see that this point is where the mast must be positioned. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out the distance covered by Claire at 6.4 meters per second. And she's traveling at this speed for 12 seconds. So the distance will be speed multiplied by time. So we have 6.4 meters per second multiplied by 12 seconds. So the distance covered is 76.8 meters. So now we need to work out the time to run the remainder of that race. So if she has 200 meters to run and she's run 76.8 of them, then she has 123.2 meters to go. And we're told that she does this distance at 5.8 meters per second. So the time to run this will be the distance, 123.2, divided by the speed, 5.8, which is approximately 21.2 seconds. So the total time will be the sum of 21.2 and the 12. So that's going to give us 33.2 seconds. So now we need to think about Michelle. And Michelle runs a distance of 180 meters. So her time will be the distance 180 meters divided by a speed of 5.9 meters per second, which is 30.51 seconds. So we can see that Michelle wins by 33.2, take away 30.51, so 2.69 seconds. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. And check out my website, mrmathematics.com for the full lesson and worksheet.
Thanks again and take care.